Hi, this is Randy Rice with another general testing principle and concept for us today. One of the principles that you'll hear quite often is that early testing is good. And in a general sense, uh, there's a lot to be gained from early testing, and we're going to take a look at some of the reasons why uh, early testing is a good thing. Uh, there are some things you need to be careful about, uh, and we're also going to explore kind of what it means to do early testing. But uh, the, the general idea here is that you can find defects throughout the project. And the sooner that you start to do that, the better off you're going to be. Uh, it's all part of kind of a filtering process throughout your project. And it doesn't matter what kind of life cycle you're using either. Uh, uh, early opportunities would be things like doing requirements reviews and design reviews and maybe early kinds of unit and integration testing and those kind of things. Uh, some people also will start uh, designing tests very early uh, and that, that's kind of where the slippery slope comes in because it, as we all know things are going to change throughout the project and if you put too much in place too soon then it, you can suffer from uh, having to do the rework and the maintenance of those items. Now the, the thing that we know from many, many years of measuring software projects, and, and, and I just looked at some recent research, and these numbers, amazingly, just really haven't changed all that much. Uh, over about half of the defects that we see on a project, you can trace back to some kind of origin and requirements. About 27% or so in uh, design, about 7% in code, and about 10% uh, and other things. Those would be kind of like your regression defects and such. So the, the big takeaway from this idea is that the great majority of defects all happen in the front end of a project. And actually that's where Agile does bring in you know some value there that you you don't put so much in concrete at the beginning uh, and you kind of do some visual things and you, you let iterations evolve and and you kind of perfect the product, you know, as it goes on. Uh, even with that method, though, if the user need is not understood, if the user stories aren't right, uh, and if the user stories don't capture all the, all the various perspectives and the risk and everything, you can still suffer from this very dynamic. And it's kind of interesting that it's like almost every new development methodology that's come along over the years, over the last 30 years, they've all tried to deal with this issue of requirements by not having them and we can't get away from requirements we need them uh, however the troubling part is is I've never seen a perfect requirement and you probably haven't either uh, there's always something that can be improved it seems in requirements well the other side of this story that makes it a really serious deal is that if we look at where people typically look for defects and this is some information from uh, QAI surveys over the past uh, years. You see that most people will report the bulk of their testing occurs in this kind of back-end phase of testing. Some people will do uh, some level of reviews and verification activities up early in the life cycle, as you see here. But by and large, a lot of companies, if they test at all, kind of put a lot of weight on finding defects toward the end of the project. And the reason that's a problem is because the cost of fixing defects really, really skyrockets toward uh, once you go into production. Even at testing, if you can find issues in the problem or in the product in testing, uh, you're still better off than finding them out in live usage. And this is just the cost of fixing the defect. This is not the cost of cleaning up after it. For example, there, there could be uh, fines and penalties and direct customer losses. Uh, the, the NASDAQ performance uh, defect has cost over $80 million uh, to NASDAQ, not only in the compensation to shareholders and to brokerages, uh, but to pay various uh, federal fines and penalties. So the bottom line here is that most defects are created early on in a project, but unfortunately we don't find them until much later. 
And so this idea of defect containment uh, is one that's kind of rare uh, to, to find, but one that you really need. The more you can contain the defects to around where they were created, the better off you're going to be. And there's a cost dynamic. I call it the 110-100 rule. About, it costs about 10 to 100 times as much to fix a defect in those later stages of a project or in production. So a lot of people are concerned with saving money, you know, these days, although I know sometimes it doesn't appear that way. Uh, but, you know, when we ask for tools and training and such, people, our management always says we don't have the money for that. Well, if you really want to save money in projects, then you want to spend time up front in your system development or your system purchase process to make sure that you have the needs stated correctly. And that's where you're going to find uh, the, the big value, the, the big bang for your buck in terms of, of software testing. So I hope this information has helped a little bit to reinforce the reasons why test early and often is a good thing. This is Randy Rice of RiceConsulting.com. If you want to learn more stuff like this, come by my website at RiceConsulting.com. Thanks for watching.